Exchange Traded Funds, or ETF in short, is a much misunderstood concept, which is why many investors don't even explore this option when it comes to investing. In reality, investing in ETFs is perhaps the best way to get started with investing. I will explain why that is the case and towards the end I will show you 10 of my favorite ETFs. Let's get started. Simply put, an ETF is a basket of securities that you can buy and sell through a broker. Because an ETF is made up of different securities, it provides investors with instant diversification, thus reducing the risk. Here is an example of the SPY ETF. If you explore this ETF, it consists of all these securities. In simple terms, if you buy one share of the SPY ETF, you are basically holding a small piece of all these companies. I picked the SPY ETF because it tracks the S&P 500 index. The S&P 500 index consists of 500 large cap and mid cap US companies. So holding this ETF means you're investing in these 500 companies. Why is this a great option? One word, diversification. Diversification is an investment technique that is used to manage risk. Rather than you put all your money in a single company or industry, you spread your investments across different companies and sectors. When you spread your investment portfolio across companies that are large and small, at home and abroad, in stocks and bonds, you avoid the risk of having all your eggs in one basket, keeping your risk to a minimum. And with ETFs, you get just that. The risk is spread across a basket of assets. There are different types of ETFs, some that track the market indexes, like the SPY ETF I just talked about, while others track the bond market, commodities like gold prices, oil prices, and so on. Since there are so many options out there, you need to determine what your investment strategy is, what do you want to invest in, are you investing for the long term or short term. My investing strategy, for example, is quite simple. I'm a long term investor with bulk of my investments that track US companies and some investments that track foreign companies. That means I own most ETFs that track US markets, but I also own ETFs that track foreign markets like Europe and China. This way, my portfolio is well diversified. Another thing you need to look at while picking out ETFs for your portfolio is the expense ratio. It is just a fancy term for the cost of owning an ETF. Think of it as the management fee paid to the fund company. For example, the SPY ETF has an expense ratio of 0.09%. This means that you will pay $9 for every $10,000 you have invested in the fund. Expense ratios are not deducted from your account. Instead, they are deducted from the total assets of the fund before you get your share. So let's say the SPY ETF went up 10% in a given year. With the expense ratio of 0.09%, your actual return will be 10 minus 0.09, which is equal to 9.91%. This is all done automatically and you don't need to worry too much about it. Just keep an eye on the expense ratios. Generally, I don't mind an expense ratio of 0.5% and under. The expense ratio is very easy to find on the fund's website. Lastly, I pay attention to the dividend payments as well and this is a very important part. For those who are unaware, dividends are payments that a company makes to share profits with its stockholders. A dividend is paid per share of the stock. If you own 30 shares in the company and that company pays $2 in annual cash dividend, you will receive $60 per year. Now this $60 does not sound a lot, but when this money is reinvested to buy more stock, compound interest comes into play and over the long haul, your returns will improve drastically. I will run the numbers at the very end to show you what kind of returns are realistically achievable. In the case of SPY ETF, here are the dividend payments paid over the past years. You can look at the dividend payments in your brokerage account or you can simply use Dividend.com. This is a great site to see dividend payments for any ETF. Now that you know the basics, here is the list of my top 10 ETFs. For these ETFs, I look at the fund's history, the dividend payments, what the expense ratio is and what the fund is holding and tracking. The first 6 ETFs are focused on US companies. The next two are focused on Chinese companies, then I have one focusing on European companies and the last one is an all international fund. At the very top, you see the Spider S&P 500 ETF. As you probably know, it is one of my favorite ETFs. The ETF tracks 500 of the largest US companies. 
So buying this ETF basically means, over the long run, I'm betting on the prosperity of the US economy. If I open the holdings tab, you can see the top 10 holdings of this ETF. This includes companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and so on. Basically, names that we're all familiar with. As stated earlier, if I buy one share of the SPY ETF, I'm essentially holding a very small piece of all these companies. At the same time, I'm getting these dividend payments every quarter. Next on the list is Etsy HD. This is an ETF that tracks large cap companies that pay dividends. The expense ratio is 0.06% and here are the dividend payments. Again, this is a fund that only tracks US based companies. Here are the top 10 holdings of this ETF. As you can see, big names like Coca-Cola, Merck, Verizon, Pfizer are all there. Names that we're all familiar with. Next, we have VOO. This is a Vanguard ETF. VOO, just like the SPY ETF, tracks 500 of the largest US companies. The dividend payments are the same as SPY, but the expense ratio in this case is only 0.03%. VGT is again a Vanguard fund that tracks the performance of the technology sector. If you look at the top 10 holdings of this ETF, you will notice that they are all technology names like Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Broadcom, Cisco, and so on. The expense ratio is 0.1%. If you want to get involved with real estate with little money, look no further than the VNQ ETF. This ETF tracks companies that purchase hotels, office buildings, and any form of real estate you can think of. With an expense ratio of only 0.12%, this ETF is great to get real estate exposure without holding a physical property. Number 6 on the list is VIF, which is very similar to the other ETFs we've discussed. 7th and 8th on the list are Chinese ETFs. China is the second biggest economy in the world and having some exposure to their economy is vital. The two ETFs on this list provide exposure to the large and mid-sized companies in China. The expense ratio is on the higher side and that usually is the case with international ETFs. You may have heard of some of these names like Alibaba and JD.com. Next, I have an ETF with exposure to Europe. IEUR has an expense ratio of just 0.06% and it gives you exposure to a broad range of European companies. You have probably heard of some of the names like Shell, Siemens, GSK and so on. Lastly, I have VXUS on the list. This ETF consists of many companies that are non-US based. This gives your portfolio an exposure to a large blend of foreign companies. With an expense ratio of just 0.08%, this ETF holds companies like Toyota Motors, Nestle, Samsung Electronics, and so on. With these 10 ETFs, you are mostly focusing on investing in US companies with some exposure to China, little exposure to Europe, and some other emerging markets. It gives you a good mix of many companies and your risk is spread around. There are many other ETFs out there. Go to ETFs.com and explore. If there is a particular sector on your mind, like energy, select that category and see all the different ETFs that are offered for this sector. There is a lot you can learn from this website. Figure out your investing strategy and invest accordingly. The last topic I would like to discuss is what are some realistic investment returns that are possible. For this, we will use an online calculator. The values I'm putting in this calculator are based on historic returns. Let's say you start with an initial investment of $5,000 and you add $500 every month to your investments. If you invest consistently for 10 years, your investment would grow to just over $110,000. If you invest consistently for 30 years, the final value at the end of 30 years would be close to $1.2 million. That's the power of compound interest. I'm going to link this calculator in the description box. Play around with the numbers and see what is possible realistically based on historical returns. One quick tip, if you invest this money in a Roth IRA, your money will grow tax free. More on that in another video, but just something to keep in mind. It is important to be aware that while expense ratios for ETFs are generally very low, they can vary from fund to fund. Even ETFs that track the same index have different costs. Other than that, ETFs are a great way for beginners to get started with investing. The beauty of ETFs is that you don't have to be very hands-on. And once you get a hang of it, you can explore other investing options as well. 
ETFs are not only for beginners. As a matter of fact, they are very common amongst professionals as well. A few decades ago, there was no such thing as an ETF. But ever since ETFs became mainstream, investing has never been easier.